We're back here in downtown Milwaukee at this beautiful view near the Swing Park. If you were to visit the Swing Park and walk up the bridge and then continue to walk up the path, you come to this space right here where you get a great view of the whole cityscape. And the reason why we're up here is because we want to be reminded of what's behind us. Not just the buildings, not just uh, the construction, but the people. And we are reminded in our city groups that uh, God has placed us where we are for a reason, that God wants to use us where we're at, that the people that we rub shoulders with, that is our mission field. And that is what God wants to do with us, is to use us to preach his gospel. So what does it look like to share the gospel with people today? I think when we talk about that question, that brings up maybe some anxiety or some fear because we know of the examples that have not worked that we've either seen or heard. Maybe we think about the people who get on their soapbox and like preach a message of like condemnation or maybe we think of the people who go door to door to hand out tracts and say, hey, read this and you'll figure it all out. I think those ways don't work, at least not today. But I think some of the other ways that also don't work that we sometimes see is people who argue on Facebook and say, hey, you gotta believe this or uh, sometimes we think of, if I just bring my friend to church, like they'll hear the gospel and they'll get saved right away. Or maybe we think of, well, if I just act like Jesus but don't actually say anything about him, then I'll tell people about the gospel. I think with all of that, what we need to do is we need to actually look at what Jesus did when it came to telling people about the kingdom of God. So right now, actually what we're going to have you do, instead of me telling you what Jesus did, we're going to have you guys look at it in John chapter 4. So together in your city groups, read John 4 together, and then talk about some insights and how does this relate to evangelism today. Hopefully you guys were able to take away a few insights from John chapter 4. I thought I would just share a few that I also see in this text. Number one, the first thing we see is that Jesus goes out of his way to care for the lost. Jesus is traveling through a town that typically no Jew would ever travel to, and yet he does. He, he takes this route to meet with this woman at the well. The second thing we see is that Jesus meets with this woman and meets her where she is at, where they're not talking about uh, sin right now. They're, Jesus is just trying to build a relationship with this person. And then the third thing that we see is that after a relationship has been built, then Jesus actually shares about who he is. And I think what's great about this text is it kind of gives us a, a quick view of what does it look like to evangelize today. I think sometimes we start with the sin first and we start out of the gate there. I'm not sure that's very effective. I think the first thing that we see is First of all, going out of our way, caring for people, caring for the lost, meeting them where they are at, and then after building a relationship, then we get the opportunity to actually share the gospel. But then it's asked ask the question, how do we actually share the gospel? What do we actually say? Jesus actually takes time to get to know this person, to show genuine care for this woman before he begins to share about who he is. I think sometimes in evangelism, we think we have to jump right into the sin first and discuss that topic. Notice that that comes up much later in the conversation. First, it's about building a relationship, showing care, and then that leads to Jesus sharing about who he is. We have to think about when we actually get to the moment where we have built that relationship, what do we actually say? How do we share the gospel with someone with actual words? So what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna share with you how to actually say the gospel in a short but clear, concise version. So imagine you only had a couple of minutes. Maybe someone walks up to you and says, hey, I wanna know about Jesus. Can you tell me about him? Well, here's a way to say it. And actually, it's by using the word gospel itself. G, God created us to be with him. O, our sins separate us from God. S, sins cannot be removed by good deeds. P. Paying the price for sin, Jesus died for us. 
E. Everyone who trusts in him alone has eternal life. L. Life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. The reason why we're teaching you how to share the gospel this way is not because we want you to go to someone and then go, let's see, what's the O, what's the S, what's the P, but rather we want you guys to internalize what does it look like to share the gospel in your own words so that way you understand here's what it is and then how to share it. And after you do share it, the next thing you do is wait for them to give a response. They'll either respond with, huh, you know, that's really interesting and that's not for me. And if that's what they say, hey, that's okay. At least you shared it and at least you planted the seed. Maybe they'll say, you know, I still have some questions about that. And that's where you can go, hey, great. And I'd love to help talk to you more about this and try to help answer any questions I can. Or maybe they say, yes, I want to know who this Jesus is. And that's when you come alongside them and you begin to tell them how to follow Jesus, what does it look like to be obedient to him, and then what does it look like to give their lives over to him. So at the end of the day, guys, the thing we have to take away from this is, while we should know how to share the gospel, it's not on us to save anyone. That's the role of the Holy Spirit. Our job is to just be ready to share the gospel whenever we're supposed to. So hopefully, as we've been talking about city groups the last couple of months, and there are your people that you're thinking about and praying about, that you're building a relationship with, at some point, you might get that opportunity to actually share with words the gospel. So you might be thinking to yourself, does this actually happen? Do people actually come to know the Lord? Well, years ago, in our own youth group, we had a student who, at first, was not a believer, he didn't know the Lord, and he didn't want to know the Lord. But yet, he developed a friendship from someone in our youth group. After some time in building that friendship, where they bowled together, they lived life together, they went to school together, eventually he was invited to a youth group. And he kept coming and he came to several nights and he heard the gospel a lot, but he didn't accept it right away. Well, after a long time had passed and after he'd built more friendships and built more trust with Christians, eventually the Holy Spirit worked and he got to a place where he said yes to Jesus. And that story is to tell us that, guys, this does happen. People who don't know who the Lord is do eventually come to know him. And it's because God works through us and on his timing and through the work of the Holy Spirit. So for us, that means we gotta be ready to share. We gotta know what we're sharing, and we have to wait for the Holy Spirit to do His work. Ooh.